Unsharp masks. They've been a favorite for photographers for a long time as far as sharpening their photos selectively and you know providing a really good way to sharpen your photos in Photoshop. But can you do it non-destructively? Let's take a look. Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Daniel Allen, photographer in the Seattle area focusing on uh, portraits, landscapes, and all things having to do with post-processing. So um, I'm very glad to see you back uh, here. It is a couple days after Thanksgiving and the turkey hangover is finally over, thank God. Um, and so we're left over, so <laughs> we were able to get through it all, so that's good. And um, now it's back to business. And I was just watching a, a, a video online and uh, they were talking about um, uh, using unsharp masks for doing sharpening. And they commented that the um, the downfall of using them is that it's destructive and you have to actually, you know, stamp everything visible and, you know, then sharpen that and apply it to your photo. But if you have to go back and make changes, then you've got to resharpen all over again. And so I thought I would put out a video saying that's not quite the case. And there's a really cool workaround to get around this. And I'm not sure how many people know about it. So I thought I'd put out a video to let you guys know. So um, first of all, uh, let's take a look at what an unsharp mask is in Photoshop. And, and then I'll show you kind of uh, what, how, you, how you can work with it in a more efficient and non-destructive way, okay? Okay, here we are in Photoshop and I'm looking at one of my photos I took at the uh, Kubota Gardens over here in Renton area. I'm gonna turn off my watermark here real quick. And an unsharp mask. So the way you do an unsharp mask is you uh, typically stamp everything, um, stamp all of your layers. You can press Control, Alt, Shift, and E, or I guess that would be Option, uh, what is it? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Windows user, so for Mac, what would it be? Um, option, Command, Shift, E, I believe. And that creates this layer here. Um, it's marked as layer one. And that has um, all of, you know, everything that's visible on the screen currently. Then you would go up to your filters and you would go to other, high pass, and you want to set your radius um, for, well here, let's cancel out of this. Typically you want to try and be at 100% when you're doing this um, because you want to see the detail that you want to pull out. So I want to focus on, um, I want to enhance the focus here on these rocks. So when I come into um, high pass, I want to try and start to see some of the detail coming through in the um, areas of the rock that I want to bring out. So like if I wanted to we turn off the preview here, if I wanted to focus more on the moss here and start bringing out some of that, you know, I could, but I want to adjust um, I want to adjust the the radius uh, more for that. So it's just it depends what you want to what you want to focus. Now you want to try and be careful too of these hard edges. So you've got some of these edges that are really starting to get really dark. You want to look for uh, dark edges and white edges um, because those are going to be really high contrast areas in your sharpening. But the more you pull up on the radius, you know, the more. Now obviously, if you're starting to see color bleed through like this, that's way too much. But um, you know, for most most things, um, you know, you want to the lower the radius, the more uh, the more noise you're going to get. Um, so typically, like two is a pretty good two is a pretty good radius. And we're going to say OK, and we're going to switch this to um, hard light, vivid light. The blending mode that you use is going to uh, um, impact greatly how much sharpening is done. So some of this might be really hard to see in YouTube after the compression algorithms are done. But basically, you know, you can even vivid light. I mean, that will create a really strong contrast in there, but it, it can be really nice too. So depending on how much you need. So I'm going to actually go with hard light because that looks best here. And um, I'm going to probably even zoom in a little bit more. Well, I don't think you guys can see that much in the YouTube channel. So we're going to turn this off and turn it back on again. Off and on. And that is way over sharpened. But um, when you start to do it selectively in your photo, 
it can really make a huge difference. So, you know, it, it, um, it's really subtle when I'm zoomed out like this, you probably can't tell much of a difference, but, but I definitely can, especially in the mossy areas, which is what I was trying to target with this. But now the problem comes in, um, if I make changes to this, so just to elaborate that, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to take a black paintbrush, um, with flow at a hundred. And I am going to just come in here and draw over the top of my photo, just like this. Actually, I'm going to use a big brush and I'm going to go right over the top. Now, if we zoom in, we can see the sharpening is still being applied here. Do you see that? The sharpening is being applied. It's not being updated. So what everything that's underneath, if I turn off the sharpening, it goes away. So that sharpening is being applied, even though everything that's underneath it has changed. So one of the videos I was watching, the video I was watching uh, was kind of a wish list for Adobe saying, you know, hey, Adobe, we would really, really love it if um, you could add smart filters for sharpening because you know, that would be really cool because right now it's so destructive. The thing is, it doesn't have to be. So I'm, I'm actually going to delete both of these layers and I'm going to show you how to do it non-destructively so that if you do make a change, it's not, you're not going to have to resharpen anything. So I am going to select all of these images, all these layers here, all the visible layers. This is what I would have done the stamp visible of. So anything that would have been part of that stamp visible, stamp visible, I'm going to include in the selection of layers and right click in here and say convert to smart object. And I really love smart objects. I can't stress that enough. Smart objects are just amazing because they kind of fill the gap in functionality that we've been really missing in Photoshop. This being one of them. This is an example of an instance where, you know, there was a need. I mean, we needed the ability to, you know, uh, have non-destructive sharpening and smart filters is a way of doing it. So here we have this smart filter that we've, our smart object that we've created. I'm just going to rename this, um, smart contents. That way I know that it's a smart object. And if I click into it, I can edit more stuff, right? Now, how can we edit this? How can we have a layer on top of it and have that update real time as we change the contents underneath it? Well, we create a linked copy of the layer. So you can just press control J and now we have smart contents copy and smart contents copy. Let's take a look at the properties of that. So. I'm, I'm actually going to just rename this um, as um, sharpening filter. There we go. Let's go ahead and do that same thing we did before. We're going to take a black and a black um, black paintbrush and draw all over the top of this image. And I'll show you what happens. So we did this before and now if we save and close and now it's updating the smart filters and look at that. We have the black updated, but it's in both of them. Do you see that? If we turn this top, we were actually looking at the top filter, uh, the top layer initially. And if we turn it off and on, we don't see any difference there. Those are exactly the same, which means you can edit one of these. They're linked. You can edit one of these and they are updated in both places. Now you can also create duplicate layers, um, that are not linked. So you would instead come in here and do new smart object via copy. And that actually breaks the link between the two smart objects. So you can ind um, independently edit them. And that's really handy for doing things like night to day conversions, where you want to apply a filter for um, 
uh, where you're turning it to dusk or dark, but then you want to maybe have really bright windows or something. You would have you would do this where you create a copy um, that is not linked, and in one you would do the really dark, moody, you know, nighttime scene, and in the other one you do the bright windows. So that's one way of doing that. But if you just leave it like this, then you can come in here and we'll do the high pass filter again. Other high pass. And I'm going to say radius of two. Hit OK and change my blend mode to uh, what, what did we do last time? Hard light, I believe. Or was it vivid? I think it was hard light. I think hard light looked better. Doesn't matter. We can come back and change it if we don't like it. And there we have it. But you're like, wait a minute. You've created your sharpening with this big black blob in the middle of it. Not a problem. All you have to do, double click on your smart object and you click on, double click on the thumbnail to open up your smart object. And we're going to come back into here and we're just going to take out this black layer that we drew on. Close and save it. And here it's saving it. And now if you look, the black mark is gone and the sharpening mask has updated. So the sharpening has the 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 unsharp mask has been modified so that it doesn't have that black anymore. So you can see that it's automatically updating and keeping current with whatever is in that smart object. So it's a really great way to do non-destructive editing for doing sharpening using high pass filter. And yeah, problem solved. And we can tell that it's not there anymore if we put another layer in and and uh, let's do that like we did before. Just draw black, draw black on the layer right between the two, and there you have it. You can see that the sharpening is still, you know, the sharpening is is actually, um, you know, what it's supposed to be. We'll delete that layer, and we don't have to worry about it. Now I can come back in and adjust the mask. I only want to probably sharpen certain areas of this image, not the whole thing. But um, th that's how that works. So kind of a short video for you today, but I wanted to get that out to you. It's some pretty important information and a really good way to do non-destructive sharpening on your photos. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications when I put out new videos for you. Great talking to you today. Take care and have fun with your creative editing.